Welcome to the CNCFCI Working Group Monthly Meeting. Today is Tuesday, August 28th at 106. And if you have any items or announcements you'd like to make, please go to the link for the agenda and notes and feel free to add your topics for discussion there. Thanks in advance for everyone who's added there contact information to the attendees section. So we've got some slides. We'll take a look at those in a moment. Um, let's also take a look at some of the items up for discussion and see if they're in the right order in which we'd like to go over them. If we'd like to make any adjustments, now's the time. So first we'll go over some announcements. I'll skip over those. We'll take a look at some action items from last month's July uh, CNCFCI Working Group monthly meeting. We've got some new topics on CrossCloud CNCF.ci dashboard and Open Sky New Zealand. And it, the, if anyone else would like to add anything, please feel free to um, jot it down or let me know and I can jot it down for you. Okay, go ahead and do some announcements. Uh, today is the first day of the OSS in Vancouver and Ed from Packet sends, send his regards. He was, he's traveling and will be on his way to Vancouver as we speak. So he may dial in if, um, if he has connectivity and if the timing works out. Otherwise, um, anyone else who's in OSS Vancouver, reach out. We'd love to see you in person. Sadly, I'm in Austin, Texas, but uh, the team, I'm sure, would love to see you. Today at 1.30 to 4.30 Pacific time will be the CNF seminar and workshop led by Arpit Joshipura and Dan Khan. And the CrossCloud group will be giving a 20-minute presentation in today's workshop, the Network Service Mesh team will also be present and giving a presentation in that workshop. So it should be um, a pretty exciting one and I'm sad to miss it, but please take lots of notes. Next month, the uh, CrossCloud team will be uh, working the CNCF booth in Amsterdam at the Open Networking Summit Europe. That's at the end of September. In November, we have been accepted to give a CrossCloud CI intro presentation at KubeCon China in Shanghai. It's been scheduled for Wednesday the 14th. And then on Thursday the 15th, we'll be giving a CrossCloud deep dive topic on how to add a new project to cncf.ci. We've submitted proposals for KubeCon North America in Seattle in, De in December, a pending response. We submitted to give a talk in EnvoyCon and learned that there are 14 spots available and they received 70 applications. So that's good that folks are excited about Envoy and EnvoyCon and we'll keep you posted if we are one of the lucky 14. We also submitted and pending response our CrossCloud CI intro and deep dive for KubeCon in Seattle. I'll open up the notes, I'm sorry, open up the slides and share my screen. If Taylor, you're available to go over some of the next items. Sure, that'd be great. Lucina, I had a quick question about the adding a new project, uh, the talk you're giving. To be clear, that's not the provider, but adding a new project like FluentD or ONAP, adding something new in that vein, correct? Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. Uh, the CNCF has currently hmm, over 24 projects that are in the sandbox, sandbox, incubating, or graduated. And so we have implemented five, <laughs> and we're working on the sixth, and we're working on that how-to guide so that we can get um, collaborators on how to add those remaining CNCF sponsored projects.
that's awesome. Thanks, Lucina. So um, I guess we can go on to, I think, a slide five. Is that right? Yeah. So a quick update on the, the Cross Cloud CI project itself. <coughs> Oracle, uh, adding Oracle as a cloud provider for provisioning is in progress. Um, this is broken down into two parts. Uh, the first was the on that first pull request 95. It's about adding the initial support, which is um, we have working in our dev, our CI dev environment, and we can provision to machines and manage the the machine resources that's happening at this point. What we're wanting to add uh, before. Uh, putting it out on the dashboard is support for the other services like storage and um, all the other networking services that are provided uh, by Oracle Cloud and have those in place. Um, that's split out uh, for Oracle from the Kubernetes. The provider came in after they started having all cloud providers as separate. So. That's in progress and hope to have that up soon. Um, we may hear some from Ben or someone if, if they're online later. Um, let's go on to slide seven. So general maintenance, uh, mainly updates for different versions. Um, there's some changes on uh, Kubernetes that we'll get in on some failures that we saw here in a bit. Um, and IBM Cloud has was failing for a bit because of private VLANs um, disappeared during destroys, but those are back. Um, doesn't look like something we need to talk upstream. Slide eight. So part of the new projects um, that Lucina was talking about. So we're adding Envoy, and that will be going on. Also updating documentation, so that'll be anyone could hopefully understand and try to help provide uh, new projects as well as they're wanting to use the cross-cloud software separately. They'd be able to do that. And this is for the app deployment and EDE test um, stage, um, deploying to Kubernetes and tying in with the deep dive and the different talks that we're planning on doing. On the dashboard itself for UI UX updates, uh, where you're in the midst of adding support for skipping the app deploy stage and showing NA for the app badges whenever a build fails so that we don't have any of those and um, that'll be an improvement there. And that's uh, pretty close to going to production. We'll see a screenshot here in a minute. And, and then trying to look on how we can work with upstream projects and cloud providers to provide um, feedback on errors when we, we validated them. One of them that we're looking at for uh, talking with maybe the Kubernetes SIG, uh, auth, SIG auth or another group would be about the TLS uh, connection uh, failures that we're seeing as a result of a new update in Kubernetes. Slide nine. So this is the, um, the update for adding, skipping the app deploys. Um, and this is, should be on production pretty soon. So on this one, we had a failure on the ONAP uh, build for their head release and as a result, we didn't need to do that, so we skipped that. Um, we're planning on doing something similar whenever Kubernetes provisioning, so you may see something next after this about the columns. Um, let's go on. Slide 10. So working with various groups, there's um, some folks that are starting to use CrossCloud for some projects outside of what the dashboard is doing. Um, NSM, the Network Service Mesh Group, is, uh, has started using 
cross cloud, the provisioner portion. So this is the multi cloud provisioner out of the project for provisioning Kubernetes and testing the network functions CNS on Kubernetes. So started doing that and starting to get a few updates on the documentation. We'll be getting more as as they move further along. And then we've been helping that group with um, trying to provide feedback on what's available with packet and other things uh, for doing testing. So specifically around the the NICs that are needed uh, to do acceleration performance stuff they need. So uh, based on knowledge that we've gained. Slide 11. So this is a quick overview of some of the goals for uh, folks. Um, trying to complement the landscape trail map uh, for onboarding new users, focus on in-user testing. So this could be on the Kubernetes side, complementing all the other testing from an in-user perspective in different versions. Um, and some of these other items like saving history and stuff would tie into the status uh, repository that we're going to continue on. Slide 12. <clears throat> so um, we're going to continue working with some of the groups. We've been doing a lot of work with um, attending a lot of the cluster API meetings and looking at how we can work with the new cluster API providers, um, the cloud providers being added, and where that can tie in, where we could help there potentially with maybe Packet um, next, and then looking at how to utilize KubeADM. So either pulling in stuff that's being used in the community or um, trying to see where we can take either software or stuff we've learned um, in this project and contribute to those other communities. OpenCI is a group that's trying to look at how everyone's doing that and try to share that knowledge. So attending that with uh, some of the folks that are on the call and other, other folks that may be here. And then of course, uh, Network Service Mesh that I mentioned. Uh, slide 13. So some of the events that we mentioned, um, we attend the Network Service Mesh. Um, if you're in Austin or coming through Austin, there's an open source access networking meetup. It's uh, second Fridays of every month, and I'd love to have you there. It's a lot of fun. Um, chat, drink, on a, and throw access on a Friday. And then some of the conferences that we're attending. Next slide. Um, I can give a quick overview just to have it here if, uh, for folks who may not have looked at the dashboard in a while. So we go to slide 15. This is a dashboard um, similar to what we looked at before on a good day, everything green. The CNCF CI is the production dashboard for CNCF on slide 16. And we can see here's the build um, column, and this is a status for all the projects on the left. And then slide 17. Highlighting the cloud providers that we currently have active on the production dashboard um, from AWS um, through IBM Cloud. There's OpenStack for showing some hybrid uh, hybrid cloud possibilities and packets used for the bare metal. Slide 18. This um, is just highlighting the app deploy and E to E test stage. If there's any failures at this stage, um, it will link to those um, failures. And if it's a success, it's gonna go to the uh, E to E test that succeeded. And I think that may be it, slide 19. Yep, that's it. So that's it for our updates. Thanks, Lucina, for helping put those together, and uh, Watson, and I don't think Denver's here with us.
today. So who else do we have? Is it, there anyone else that was um, available? And I know we talked about Oracle and Ben. Otherwise, I think it may be you next, uh, Hippie Hacker. Hey everybody, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone over in Shanghai. Um, we've got a talk um, around a API skip, and I'm hoping to bring some of my new uh, Maori colleagues, uh, one, of who, one of whom is speaking today with the Prime Minister of New Zealand uh, at 9 o'clock. And we're super excited to start seeing um, cloud native technologies in the land of the long white cloud really starting to kick off. Uh, we're starting to, um, to see uh, uh, this, this next weekend, there's a startup weekend. And uh, over this weekend, we're hoping to invite our local community to show up and work with um, the Kubernetes and um, cross cloud and, but on our local, hardware, so things within our city to bring up and pass on the knowledge of how to bring up clouds on our own land. Uh, and we're going to call the project Open Sky. And the idea is Open Sky means there's no clouds above you yet. But the people of that area and that regional land can help build their own and connect and decide what goes uh, above them. And um, we're and excited to to uh, to see what happens over this next week. Uh, we we um, with the connections with the New Zealand government and uh, and uh, within our our uh, o o catalyst uh, is one of the newest um, Kubernetes certified uh, service providers. Um, so they're on the CNCF landscape, and I'm really glad to um, to see New Zealand starting to get on the map. Um, a lot of maps don't have New Zealand on it if they're they don't check stuff. It's really, you know, the artful ones. Um, so we're excited to see that level of interest. Where hopefully, uh, the the work that we do here this weekend, involving many people in our local community to try to launch a local club, will have the documentation and the ability to visit our Open Sky and say, "I want one too," and click on that and launch one either, you know, on Packet or on. Catalyst or on any of the other numbers that are already supported by the cross cloud provisioner and um, Yeah, it's just a, and, and, and I, I don't really have a link or anything yet because it's a startup weekend You don't really do a whole lot of, of, of stuff beforehand um, But I uh, as, as that develops I'll I'll be posting stuff on Twitter to invite anyone who's who's interested or available remotely to to do pairing or to um, to encourage the local um, our region is called the Bay of Plenty so uh, the open sky above the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. Awesome. Do you have any um, links or anything that you can drop in the notes uh, other than the the untold stories? The the I'm sorry, the KubeCon China as see the schedule there. Is there anything about Open Sky or the other stuff you want to provide? Looks like you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, there's not a whole lot there. Like as a startup weekend is one of those things where you 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 I, I'm kind of asking people ahead of time, hey would you be interested in 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 wiring this stuff up? Would you like to go out to a data center? and do wiring. Would you like to go through and document wiring? Would you like to go through? We even have interest. There's, I don't know if you're familiar with this shed project that shows it's the barn, B4 or S, yeah, B4RN in the, um, in the UK, but it's a rural broadband provider that's a cooperative. And they have their own tractors and they dig through private land getting permission to lay the fiber in the ground. And uh, we're looking to do um, something similar here, but Kiwis don't do a lot of barns, we call them sheds. So it's gonna be SH3D for <laughs> shed.nz, uh, NZ. Um, and that's just another of the things that 
as we're looking to bring the cloud to New Zealand and to, to, to see some local um, benefits uh, to this global innovation stuff we're doing. I'm trying to be sure that we inclusively uh, innovate together. Um, and this idea of the of, of rural broadband or rural or um, so the open sky is something I suspect that the government, the New Zealand government, will eventually be using so that different silos of government say, ooh, I want to innovate on top of what you're doing. And they click. And without having to do intergovernment stuff, they're bringing up the laws, because um, we're doing a lot of codification. And uh, there's a, a startup we can a few weeks back called uh, Legal Hackers. That's actually probably a pretty good link. Uh, legal, see if on Twitter, um, on Legal Hackers. And they invited the, the equivalent of the IRS showed up, about six, six programmers, and they're taking the legal code uh, of how to calculate taxes and codifying it uh, into something from France called OpenFisca. Um, and OpenFisca is, a, is, a, is some software used and generated by France to codify law. So the applications take the, um, uh, the API provided by OpenFisca so that you can uh, and on our case, um, we we have we're looking they're starting a homeschool co-op, and they wanted to know uh, are our kids eligible for a particular amount of funding, and for people with special needs, um, do they have a special? And, and that stuff's actually it's written in law in in legal terms, um, but it's actually something that if you were trying to write a program, you could say given these criteria, um, if I have kids of this age, and are we eligible for for stuff? Um, say that's the right website. <laughs> Let me let me go down through my uh, my Twitter feed, real quick. Um, there was actually a pretty good write up on. Uh, this is a thread. Let's see if it's in that thread. And um, um, this is a pretty this was this was like one of the outputs of it of that of the um, of the legal hackers. I can't click because I'm clicking on that document. I'll click over here. There we go. Open sky to uh, start legal hackers so that. This is a video um, of the app that kind of got created. Uh, it talks about some, I, we, we actually interviewed the community. And then um, uh, here's the long thread from, uh, uh, from, from Twitter, just the long Twitter, Twitter thread. And then there was actually a pretty decent write up um, somewhere, maybe earlier up in the feed. That's the, anyway, I'll, I'll put some links in there for later, but it's exciting to see um, government and community and other things being uh, generated from the work of Volk and the cross cloud team and our uh, cloud native computing uh, community. That's awesome, Chris. There were five people that were part of the uh, the little little group thing of things, and so I called the GitLab org uh, Five Eyes. I didn't realize the connotation that Five Eyes is about some government thing around everybody sharing, um, uh, observing, you know, data. Um, so I'll probably not use Five Eyes again, but it's still fun to throw, see everybody come together and have their own perspective and, and come out with something meaningful that has an impact and and, and where they are. And I'm getting a house in a week. I know this is like <laughs> I'm finally moving in to, to be be a proper Kiwi with someone. So anyway, not not CI related, but still happy news. And then, congrats on the congrats on the house. Welcome to hell. <laughs> that is <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And by the way, I would say it is CI related because you're a member of the community and you know the community is part of CI. And so it's a life change for you before it's related. Thank you. Um, it's 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 gonna be fun because it, it allows us to have a space to invite people to come uh, innovate with us 
and um, and host them. Like I love to host, so if I and this is an open invitation to to anyone in our community, um, come see me, come hang out. You can stay in my place. I will feed you Kai, and I will, you know, we will innovate and imagine things together. And I uh, would look forward to anybody who could who wants to come and hang out in New Zealand for a while. Thanks, everyone. Um, I don't know when the next one is. Uh, Lucina, can you share? There we go. Stay connected. There, Denver, or sorry, Taylor, okay, there was cool. one more issue um, mm -hmm. that I guess Denver's not here, but Hui was going to speak about part of it. They are, I, he dis Hui discovered a bug this week. It's not really a bug. It, it's just an issue that Denver was going to speak on the first half. Um, did you want to punt that or? Did you want Hui to speak on that? Well, Taylor, you already has an issue on their agenda, which is the upstream change that affects a cross cross CI. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, Denver, Denver uh, pretty much uh, know that issue. And I just want to provide a quick update on that for vSphere because um, um, I, ha I have a change now to uh, to fix that for vSphere part. Yeah, this, this is an issue I'm talking about. So I think for now for vSphere, the change is really simple. Just um, uh, vSphere provider going to, going to report the node host name. Previously, we only we're only reporting the IP address. Uh, there's upstream change that they only accept the host name from like authoritative source like a cloud provider. So um, I discussed with Denver on their, um, and, uh, and all, the, all the providers like AWS and Azure, and they already made a change to, to report host name. So <clears throat> for this, I think vSphere, uh, we're going to do the same here. So I'm, I'm testing the change right now. And literally like, well, attending the meeting. So hopefully we can get, uh, get this checking soon. Awesome. That's great to hear. And for what it's worth, Taylor, I, I didn't put it on the agenda because I'm not ready to submit a PR, but I've got a version of the cross-cloud deployer or an, maybe an unintelligible fork of it uh, where it doesn't need to rely on shared DNS and it actually can generate certs with the IPs, even a DHCP situation. So I'll, I'll be sharing that hopefully soon. That's awesome. It'd be nice if um, that could be a selection so that you could say, we can't or don't want to use an external DNS provider and we want to use IPs. That would be a good option. Looking it's, forward yeah, it's to it. It's a self-contained solution for, you know, standing up a cluster, running, t running tests, tearing it down and having no external dependencies, which, uh, you know, is the goal on our end for another project. Cool. It sounds like that would be a good um, project to maybe present on when you feel ready for that, besides any type of PR for the cross cloud CI project itself. Great. I will engage you on Slack once I'm ready to get some guidance on the next steps to presenting. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, next meeting, September 28th. And I think that is right during um, the Amsterdam time frame. It would be nice at some point if, if it makes sense to have a face-to-face -face option for the CA working group if it was planned in advance. Maybe that'd be one of the KubeCons. 
In any case, uh, continue conversations on the public mailing list, um, also Cloud Native Slack and the CNCSCI channel. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Uh, by the way, I'm also going to be KubeCon Shanghai there, so I'm, I'm going to be happy to see you and uh, a few others there. Awesome. Watson and Denver will be there, and yeah, sounds good. Yeah, great to see you there. Have a good one, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.